In the previous videos, we discussed the Telex classification system, and also we went through the historical classification systems for thracolumbar fractures. If you haven't seen those videos, you can watch them through the link above. In this video, we'll talk about the AO spine thracolumbar fractures classification system. I am Mohamed Diraz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. As I said in my previous videos, the current AO classification system, which came out in 2013, was mainly to work out the criticism uh, for the previous AO classification system, which made the uh, thoracolumbar fractures classified in more, more than 50 uh, types. So the AO spine classification system will classify the uh, injuries according to the morphology and then according to the neurological status. And then they added what they call it modifiers, which basically the uh, status of the ligamentous uh, injury or if there is other uh, uh, conditions specific for a specific group of patients. Let's have a look on those types of fractures. So as you can see here, the classification is divided into three groups. Either it's type A fracture or type B fracture or type C fracture. Type A fracture is classified into five types of fracture. B is three types of fracture and C is just one type. And the severity of injury is basically going to be more severe as we go from A to B to C. The type that's basically describing the morphology of the fracture and it's as pretty much as we, dis we discussed in the previous video where you have an axial pressure on the spine that will lead to compression type injuries which are all type A and then if you have some sort of distraction injuries which means either kind of excessive flexion or extension of the, the sort of, of the uh, spine which leads to type B injuries and if there is some sort of displacement or dislocation, which is the translation injury that happens in type C. So it's simple. So you don't get confused about type A, B, C. Then under each one of those, if we take the type A, which is compression fracture, type A0 is basically kind of minor injury, as you can see here, something through the transverse process. So that's, it's not in use as such. Type A is just a simple wedge compression fracture. And type A2, which basically a more severe compression fracture, but there is a split through the body. And then type A3 and A4 is basically subtypes of burst fracture. Either you have an incomplete burst where you have the uh, single in the plate with the posterior uh, vertebral wall is include, included, or as you, uh, A4, you will have the complete burst fracture, which involves both in the plates with the posterior wall uh, uh, included as well. Then moving to the type B fractures, which you can see here, as we said, it's the distraction injuries. So it could be type B1. B1 is basically the chance fracture. What's the chance fracture? It's basically an os transosseous injury. So patient had like severe flexion injury, and that um, leads to pure transosseous ten tension band disruption. And then you have B2, which is happens where that you have a, a, an osseoligamentous injury or disruption of that band completely so basically the posterior ligamentous complex is injured as well or the opposite if it happens that is an extension injury so the injury would be more towards the anterior part of the spine that's basically a hyper extension injury so that would be b3 and then type c which is the displacement or translation or dislocation injury which is kind of quite severe types of injury where the spine is completely dislocated out of its place. Then after you've done with describing the morphology, you can add the uh, neurology and the modifiers. The neurology, again, is pretty much uh, similar to the Telex score, where you have N0, where the patient is neurologically intact, or if they have transient symptoms, that will be N1, or radicular symptoms, which is similar to the nerve root symptoms in the TLX would be N2, N3 would be incomplete injury, and then complete injury with N4, or the patient cannot be examined like if the patient has unconscious or uh, sort of traumatic brain injury or something like that. And then the modifiers, which is M1 and M2. M1 basically to talk about the um, indeterminate injury to the posterior ligamentous structures or the tension band injuries, and then M2, which patient specific, as we said earlier in the TLX score, that was not included. 
And we, uh, I said, you have to look at a specific group of patients like patients with ankylosing spondylitis. So this is specifically the M2, where uh, patients have ankylosing spondylitis or patients having burns affecting the skin over like the injured spine. I hope this simplifies the AO spine classification systems. Also, you can look at the TLIX classification system from the previous video, and hopefully that makes it much easier for you to describe the type of injury and to assist those patients and hopefully make up your mind about your uh, planned intervention or conservative management for those group, for that group of patients. Stay tuned for the next video.